Welcome to Fin Spots Fly Tying. Today we're going to teach you how to tie a uh, traditional caddis pattern with a little bit of variation to it. Uh, first off, we'll talk about the recipe. The hook that we're going to use is uh, an Allen N203 number 12 shrimp and caddis pupa hook. You can substitute any other brand. Uh, we just chose to use Allen hooks. Uh, they're a great supporter of Fin Spots. Next, we uh, add the Chanel. Uh, we've got these in a lot of colors. Uh, we're going to use this fluorescent green. Uh, you can use it in tans or creams, so forth. Um, and here's a example of the pattern here in tied in green and black. Um, the last part is going to be the ice dubbing. Uh, we use just some of these flashier colors. Uh, they tend to pop out on the flies a little bit better. Um, and that'll be used in our dubbing loop. So we begin, uh, in this case we're going to select a uh, black thread, uh, usually use a dark color uh, depending on the pattern, but uh, blacks, grays, uh, reds if you want some transparency. We'll begin by placing the thread about a third of the way down the hook, um, working our way back towards the end to where we'll begin our pattern. Once here, we're going to uh, place a dubbing loop in there. We'll do that by taking about a foot of uh, thread and holding it between our finger and our opposite hand. And then uh, continuing to tie with our right hand, this will create the loop uh, where we create the brush for our um, ribbing on this fly. So here's where it changes from just a traditional pattern to uh, our fin spots cast. We'll take our uh, Chanel and we'll pull out the fibers on the end there so that uh, when we tie this in we can keep a uniform body shape to the uh, abdomen section of this pattern. So we'll capture that with one soft loop and then a couple of tighter loops to secure that in place, making sure we're right towards the back of the fly. bring our thread forward and we'll throw a whip fish in, finish in that uh, since we are going to be using our rotary vise for this fly. We'll start by wrapping the chenel and uh, we'll wrap it the same direction as the thread. We'll wrap that to about two-thirds the length of the hook uh, to form the abdomen of our caddis. We'll capture that, uh, put a few tight wraps on there, and clip off the excess chanel. We're going to put what more, one more whip finish in so that we can uh, work on our dubbing tool, as shown here. We'll insert the loop uh, that we created earlier, and we'll put that in the uh, little teeth of the dubbing tool. And then we're going to get the ice dubbing. Uh, in this case, since we're tying in an olive or a fluorescent green caddis, we're going to use the uh, green ice dubbing material. We'll slide that up. It doesn't need to be too thick, uh, fairly sparse, uh, since we're just creating a rib for this pattern uh, to add just a little bit buggy shape to it. We'll slide those fibers right up to uh, the connection point of the loop and the fly and spin our dubbing tool. And we'll create the brush. Uh, what you want to do is you want to stroke those fibers, just make sure you get any loose fibers out. Continue to spin the dubbing tool until you feel like it's tight. We'll place our bobbin into the uh, spindle support and begin wrapping our dubbing loop forward. Um, this is kind of your up to your discretion as far as how tight you put the ribs. Uh, but probably get five or six wraps on the fly before you hit the end of the abdomen. Uh, we want to make sure that that dubbing tool is staying perpendicular to the fly uh, to make sure that the loop stays in those teeth while you're using this pattern. We'll take our bobbin and capture that uh, dubbing loop. Put a couple of tight wraps until we feel like it's secure. And then we'll clip the excess part of the dubbing loop off.
In this pattern, we're going to try and simulate somewhat of a sclerotized uh, pronotum, as uh, often the caddis have. So we're going to create something that looks like a wing case, but uh, in uh, real anatomy, it's just creating a sclerotized plate on the pronotum. Uh, we've got some thin skin that we'll use for this material. Uh, you can substitute with any other dark material, just that matches the uh, dubbing material of the thorax. So we'll clip off a thin strip and again we'll lay that in uh, putting one soft wrap and then a few progressive tight wraps to make sure it's secure. Next we're going to take our ice dubbing. Uh, we'll pick a dark color. We're trying to imitate the legs of these uh, caddis patterns, so we're going to dub this pretty loosely. Uh, we'll stick that on the thread and then roll it. You want to make sure and roll it in one direction and kind of keep it messy. Uh, we don't want those fibers to be rolled super tight on this pattern. After we've rolled that, we'll wrap it forward and build our thorax. making sure that we've uh, put enough bulk that uh, we've got a nice taper from our abdomen to our thorax. Then we'll take that thin skin and we'll pull it forward and tie it off. And again, we want to try and have that thin skin match uh, similarly to the color of the dubbing, uh, just because we're not trying to create a wing case. Uh, we're just trying to create a uh, sclerotized pronotum. So we'll pull it over and clip the excess. Uh, there's our finished pattern. We'll put a few more wraps, uh, whip finish that uh, t two times, and uh, then we'll finish our pattern. The last part of this pattern is uh, creating the legs on this. Uh, so you either take a, a bodkin or uh, the end of your whip finish tool and just pick out those fibers on the bottom to simulate the legs coming out the uh, bottom side of our caddis. Uh, often these are free living or uh, caddis that have uh, lost their case and so we'll try and imitate something uh, with some legs coming out the bottom as you would in uh, real life. Uh, we'll trim those fibers to about the uh, length of the hook shank and then if there's any green fibers that are kind of long from our abdomen we'll also clip those too. And there you have it. The Finn Spots Caddis.